Jessica Kapilau, Chief Financial Officer of First National Bank Namibia. What a pleasure it is to be sitting down with you and hearing a little bit about your very inspirational journey to become a Chartered Accountant and today the Chief Financial Officer at FNB. Thanks for sitting down with us. Thank you and thank you for the invite. It's our great pleasure. So Oscar, tell us why is it that you decided to become an accountant? Um, my story goes way back. I was fortunate to be in a small school in Rundu um, when we had to choose subjects in grade 8. And in my first or second accounting test, my first accounting teacher, after seeing my results, he said, you are a CA material. Wow. Not knowing what a CA was, I went home that day like, oh, I'm a CA material. <laughs> <laughs> and guess what? Here I am. <laughs> so it's as simple as that, that yes, somebody early in life so the raw talent in me that um, accounting came easy. I mean, it was a natural gift and yes, life evolved, I'm a CA, and it's really as simple as that. And what an incredible start of that journey it was, but I'm sure that there was a lot of hard work that went into becoming a chartered accountant and the position that you hold today. Tell us a little bit about the journey. The journey. Definitely, I mean, the later stages were tougher um, than the initial start. But what helped definitely was the foundation. I mean, like I said, having been in a small school, initially we were really a small class with maximum eight kids doing accounting. So I've had great, a great start to this. Um, the journey. Definitely what happened was, I mean, I've done the UNISA route. So I didn't attend full-time classes. So at some point, not bragging, um, having read some books, it was like Newton was self-taught. And I told myself that, that I want to be self-taught as well. Mm -hmm. So when I went through the journey, it was a matter of years. I mean, at night I would study. I mean, year one you pass, year two you pass. Year three and four it became tougher. And when I started my honors part, I mean, to get the CTA, your entry into the board exams, um, year one I failed. And then, and I did that through Natal. I mean, it's still a distance program. And through Natal, I mean, they changed the program then where they issued me then with a yellow card. It was a matter of, if you don't make it now, we throw you out of the program. And that was the wake up call as to, I've come this far, and now, I mean, if I mess up now, it's all over, game over. And what happened then, what is this? Um, it was really a matter of deciding you've probably put in almost 10 years of the, your life thus far. You can't just throw it out. Um, and as life would have it, um, put in my effort. I passed my CTA then, which is the entry into the board exams. They was like, wow, made it. Um, wrote the board exams, passed. And, and it was a matter of registering then for board two. And in doing board two, the same thing, the results of the board exams come out in February. So I started doing calculations backwards that it was as to the results would have come out on my birthday because it's always the last Friday in February. Okay. So at that point I said I've got a date with destiny. On my birthday there's no way I'm going to be crying. That day I'm drinking champagne. So that was walking backwards I was like knowing I need to pass this exam I'm going to give it my all. And also telling myself, I'm not writing these exams twice. I'll go in once, kick it, and come out. Incredible. And so yeah. much of, of life is like that. When yes. you set your goals, and yes. when you are determined, and you work hard for them, yes. you will achieve your dreams. Because yes, and that's really a matter of having walked back with the calendar. I was like, look at the date. <laughs> Life, with yes. champagne in hand. Definitely. Beautiful. Yeah, definitely. Absolutely That's stunning. That's great. Tell us, Oscar, what do you love about this profession today? Because it's a profession that it's comparable globally. Um, there is not a set of accounting rules that's only in Namibian. I mean, when we speak of accounting rules, it's applied globally. I mean, yes, the Americans have their own thing, but the rest of the world, we apply the same accounting standards. So I can have a conversation with a guy in London, in Tokyo, in Dubai, we are speaking the same language. So that's great that you are, I mean, playing in the same field that there's not a guy who can claim to be better than us or whatever. We're playing practically the same rules. So to me, I see it as a Champions League fan square. 
Beautiful, love yes. that. <laughs> and what would you say is the most important value in this profession? Ultimately, we are custodians of wealth of the nation. Um, again, as corporates have evolved, I mean, it started off with sole proprietors, became companies, and there's that distinction. I mean, now you have management, you have employees, you've got the shareholders, and there's the referee, and that's where our profession comes in. It's keeping the system honest. Um, I mean, and that's a I mean, yeah, it's something noble, but I mean, again, if we look where the world is, the space that the financial sector plays in, I mean, it's something that's necessary, I mean, and we play our part. Beautiful. And have you had to do that, be the referee in your career many times? Um, yes, it does happen. Um, it does happen. Because, I mean, there's, there'll always be conflict. Be Again, I'm a great fan of the work that uh, Mervyn King has done in terms of the various King codes that have come out. I mean, the whole concept of the triple bottom line, because at the end of the day, we've evolved from only shareholder interest. I mean, when you speak of stakeholder interest, and that's really where we come in. I mean, most people will see the face of the CFO and only think of the shareholder. Most definitely not, because I mean, it is in my interest, shareholders' interest, to look after employees and to look after the planet. And when we speak of the planet, it speaks of we must pay the right taxes. We need to do our fair share of CSI. And of course then you need that balanced view of a CFO to remind shareholder, no, you've had your fair share of the pie, we need to reward employees fairly, we need to pay our right taxes, and we need to contribute to CSI. Because I mean our license to operate is no longer what the regulator gives you. But I mean we need to be part of society. I mean being in Namibian we must do what's right for Namibia and that's something that I definitely stand for. Absolutely yes. beautiful. What would you say is the most important piece of business advice that you have ever received? You just cited Dr. Mervyn King and his important work that he's done in corporate governance. But what would you say was the best business advice and who gave it to you? I've gone the route, um, yeah, in terms of there's not a specific um, from yes, heroes in terms of advice, yeah, Mervyn King has stood out for me in terms of advice. Uh, in, uh, the guy who really has made an impact, at least in Southern Africa, to get us away from the whole shareholder-centric worldview. But there are many. Um, there are many that we look, I mean, in our group, I mean, Johan Berger, our group uh, uh, CEO in Fast Trend, I mean, his predecessor, Cesar and Kasana. Um, yeah, so there are a couple of people who've made a difference, but it's really been the journey of moving away from a shareholder centric worldview. Um, if you look at ministers of finance across the world, um, if you look at the ones in the US, in the UK, I mean, even locally, I mean, you start seeing as to the importance that a finance leader plays. So there's a couple of people, I mean, even I mean, you, the guys in national planning, that play a critical role. Unfortunately, finance or accounting is not a mandatory subject, so not everyone has had the privilege of knowing what it actually is, or economics, that not everyone appreciates. But it's only in like, times like this, with a recession, that people start taking more interest in economic matters. But there's a lot of men and women who are making a difference every day uh, that are not heroes. That are, I mean, yes, you will not always see it on the front pages. <laughs> Very beautiful. And you just mentioned now we're in this recession that we've been trying to come out of and such. It also is applicable for life. Yes. How do you keep yourself motivated in difficult times? And you've also shared with us on your journey of starting this profession, but what's been your advice or what have you done differently? And what could you share with all of our viewers and listeners regarding staying motivated and keeping yourself going? What keeps me going um, is definitely uh, making a difference in Namibia. Um, the other is definitely just if we step back my view is we need to make namibia better the world uh, the world better i mean the un development goals or sustainable goals all those things i mean comes into play and it's you are never done learning you need to constantly reinvent yourself i mean accounting rules change um, but again, if I mean, instead of only listening to music on YouTube, there's great material out there 
on leadership and self-development because it's an area where in our field, I mean sciences, you get dot accounting and tax and all that stuff, but the, what takes energy from one as a leader is the people matters. And that's one thing where we need to invest more time and, and that's really an area that I've been spending more time on. It's just to energize yourself, it's spending, I mean, a long time, reinvest in yourself mm -hmm. and that keeps keeps one going. Because I mean, yeah. Good advice, yeah. And it is so important to keep on reinvesting Re in yourself. Yes. My last question for you is, what would you say, Oscar, that you have learned about life in the profession in becoming a chartered accountant? No one is self-made. There was always a mentor, a family member who invested in one. So when you achieve success, you cannot take it that you are a hero, you are self-made. And it's recognizing that with success, you need to also do your part invest in others, motivate others. I mean, if I look back, I'm grateful for my mom. I mean, I owe it to her, my first accounting teachers, and I mean, there are others who invested in me, and that's what I owe society. I mean, I need to also do my part in investing in others and keep others uh, going in the same route. I mean, yes, CSI is not a corporate thing. We all need to do our part. Absolutely, because we are because of one another. Yes. Thank you so much for coming to share your wisdom and your journey with us. We really appreciate it. Oscar Kapila, thank you. Thank you for having me. It's been wonderful. Great.